Thanks for taking time out of your schedule to spend a few moments with us here today. Um, I want to take a, a few minutes to talk about peace. Peace is one of those words we hear a lot of around the holidays. It's on Christmas cards all the time, along with hope and joy and love. And hope and joy and love and those type of things, like I feel like I understand those. I know what they look like. I've experienced them. But peace has been a little bit more elusive for me. I hate to admit it, but I don't feel like I've experienced peace in my life as much as I would like to. Um, but Jesus teaches that peace is available to all of us. They even call him the Prince of Peace. So I feel like, especially around the holidays, this is something we need to cultivate in our lives. And I have a practice that can help us cultivate more peace in our lives. How does that sound? But first, I want to tell you a story. So this story is found in the Bible in the book of Luke chapter 10. I think it starts at verse 38. And it's the story of two women, sisters named Martha and Mary. So Jesus is is doing what he does. He goes from town to town, village to village, teaching, preaching, healing people. And one day he shows up at Martha's village and Martha invites Jesus to come and be a guest at her house, which is pretty cool, right? So Jesus says yes. And he comes to Martha's house and Martha is busy with preparations for her guests. You know, she's probably getting them food and water and all that stuff. And Martha's sister, Mary, just goes right down and sits at Jesus's feet and listens to him talk. So Martha eventually comes to Jesus and says, will you tell Mary to come help me? I have a lot of work here to do. And Jesus says, Martha, Martha, you are very worried, but Mary has chosen the greater thing and it won't be taken away from her. I feel so much like Martha in this story sometimes. Like there's so much work to do that I don't stop and take the time to do what Mary does, to just sit at Jesus' feet. But that's what I've been working on lately, taking time out to stop and sit. And I call it my sitting practice. Um, some people have meditation practices or a or prayer or maybe quiet time, but I like the phrase sitting practice, and I think it really, really applies to the story with Mary. So um, I will go so far as to say I believe a sitting practice is essential in cultivating peace and that it has been the one thing that has helped me have a greater sense of peace and less stress in my life. So I haven't really talked about this publicly before, but this is what my personal sitting practice looks like. Um, you can copy it, you can borrow little bits from it, but I think it's important to at least have an example of what a sitting practice to cultivate peace looks like. Because we hear these Bible stories like, oh, Martha was busy, but Mary sat at the feet of Jesus. And we think, well, that's great. Jesus was in her living room and she sat at his feet. Like, how can I do that? How does that relate to me? But I think there really is a way it relates to us. We know what it looks like to be like Martha and let go of um, maybe some of the responsibilities that we have that are taking us away from having a healthier spiritual state. But what does it actually look like to cultivate peace? Well, this is what it looks like for me. Um, so, so the first thing to do in a sitting practice is to sit. Um, I I really like to like listen to spiritual podcasts while I'm driving in my car, or like have spiritual conversations on the phone with my friends or through Marco Polo while I'm cooking dinner. And these things are great and they help me grow my spiritual life, but they're not cultivating peace the way sitting does. So we got to stop what we're doing completely and park our butt in a chair and just sit down. Um, I love to just go up in my room and sit in my bed. I've even sat in the driver's seat in my car before I go in the grocery store to take a few minutes to do this practice. Um, so the first thing I do is I kind of like get comfortable in my chair and I take a deep breath. <sighs> that deep breath is really important because when we're stressed, how, do our, how does our body respond? We get like all tense and our breathing gets shallow. So when you relax, physically relax and take some deep breaths, you're telling your body that you're switching gears. And we're body, soul, and spirit. You can't take care of your spirit or your soul without taking care of your body too. So you got to breathe in and relax. So I relax. 
And now it sounds great. Oh, we're just going to sit down and like have some sort of meditative moment in God's presence. But the fact of the matter is, is our brain really has a hard time not worrying and not thinking of all the hundreds of things that we think we should be doing. So I like to sometimes, when I started this practice especially, I would keep a, a piece of paper and a pen next to me. So if I had some thought come in my head that was important that I didn't want to forget, I could just write it down. So when I'm sitting down and I'm going to start trying to like bask in God's presence and I remember, I think I have a dentist appointment tomorrow or I never scheduled that oil change for my car. Like I'll just write that down quick. So it's not on my mind the whole time that I'm trying to be at peace because you can't have that worry or that task on your mind while you're trying to be at peace. So, um, so I write that down when it comes up and then like for me, have you ever thought about what it's like to have thoughts and ideas? Like for me, when I'm sitting, it feels like a thought will just pop in my head. Like it feels like it just comes in. You've heard the phrase like in one ear and out the other. Well, an idea comes in and usually we like, we think about it, like we roll it around in our minds and, and toss it around and what should we do about that? And then we finally let it go. But when I'm in this sitting moment, when I have a thought or idea, if it's not important, like I have to schedule that oil change, that I write down. But other thoughts and ideas, I'll just let them pass. Like, I'm not going to think about them more. I'm not going to give them more of a seconds, seconds worth of recognition. I'm just going to let it go. I'm just going to let it go. And what I want to get at in the sitting practice is a greater truth, a sense of the presence of God. And that's not, the presence of God isn't a feeling. It's an awareness of of a truth. It's almost like a law. Like gravity is a law. Like I got a pencil in my hand. I drop it. Like it's not going to fall up. It's going to drop because that's the law. Um, the truth of our existence is that the kingdom of heaven is in our midst. That's what Jesus teaches. The kingdom of heaven is among you. It's within you. So my sitting practice is just, is just focusing on that. So I sit and I become aware that the room that I'm in right now the worries that I have, the work that I want to do, they're not the highest truth. Like, they might be good things. There might be scary things, but they're not the highest truth. I think the highest truth for me is that the kingdom of heaven is among us. It's, it's in us. And that God is good and that really everything is okay. And that the fears that I have, they're not the most important thing. And I just kind of sit with that. I just sit with that awareness that that God's got my back and that everything's okay on some level. Even though we see pain and we see fear and we see division in the world, it's not the greatest truth. And I just sit with that. And in that, I feel peace. And that's it. That's it. It's that simple. And I don't get up out of the chair until I feel like I've come to a place where I know it in my soul to be true. So that's what I want to leave you with today. And my hope and my prayer is that in this season, the holiday season and the season of life, that we together can, can cultivate some peace because we're not going to see it in the world until we see it inside of each and every one of us. Thanks.